Julia Bell here with another wire wrapping tutorial. I am super excited to show you all how to make this Aurora Borealis ring. This piece is made using dead soft sterling silver wire and crystal rondelle beads. All of the supplies will be listed in the description below and remember to like and subscribe if you like tutorial videos like this one. To start this project, select your focal beads. I'm using silver ball beads, spacer beads, and aurora borealis crystal rondelles. And then set these aside. First, cut two six inch pieces of 20 gauge sterling silver round dead soft wire. and then cut two more six inch pieces of 22 gauge wire. Clean the wires and straighten them with the polishing cloth. Lastly, cut a four foot piece of 30 gauge wire for wrapping. I'm going to fold the 30 gauge wire in half, making a very loose loop in the middle. Take the first 20 gauge wire and wrap the 30 gauge wire around one time with the wire tails facing in the same direction. Next, Grab a 22 gauge wire and put it in between the 30 gauge wire tails and wrap around that wire once. Now to make the figure eight pattern, pull the 30 gauge wire straight down and add the next 22 gauge wire on top of both 30 gauge wire tails. Wrap the 22 gauge wire one time going in the opposite direction. Add the last 20 gauge wire on top of the 30 gauge wire tails again, wrapping the 20 gauge wire one time. and then go back up the wires in the same pattern we just did. Now we are at the beginning of this wrap pattern. This weave is the same on each side.
alternate sides to keep everything even. Once this weave is about one half of an inch long, spread the wires into two sections on each side creating a smooth, narrow to wide tapering effect, trying to make sure that each side is even. Continue the same wire weaving pattern as before. Follow the taper of the frame wires to widen and expose the figure eight pattern. Keep the wire weave pattern going until it reaches about one inch long. I'm going to make a size seven ring. In order to do that, I need to figure out the ring band length for a size seven ring. I need a length of 57.18 millimeters. So I'm going to take this number and subtract the length of the focal part of this ring, which is all of these beads, including the spacers and the silver ball beads which measures about 7 eighths of an inch or about 22 millimeters. So the ring length 57.18 minus 22 is 35.18 millimeters. We will keep wrapping this pattern until we reach that length. Once this weave is finally about 35.18 millimeters in length, I will continue to wrap only the two wires on this side. We will continue the pattern we were using before only with the first two wires. Continue this pattern on this side until the entire weave reaches about 57 millimeters in length. Switch to the other side and continue doing the same weaving pattern. Make sure this is on the diagonally opposite side as the other.
I'm going to leave these wire tails in case I need to extend the wire weave at any later point. Looking at the right side of the piece with the wrapped section on top, take the exposed 22 gauge wire and bend a loop close to the figure 8 pattern. Use the round nose pliers to guide the wire. Use a ring mandrel like the stainless steel one to bend the ring band. Always make this first bend two sizes smaller than what your target size will be. Place the wire sections together, alternating between sides. Wrapped sections are at the top and at the bottom, while the plain wires are in the middle. Starting at the bottom of the middle section, grab the 22 gauge wire and feed it into the loop we created. Do the same on the other side. Start pulling that wire tight on both sides. Go with the natural flow of the bend we made earlier. Use the mandrel to help you achieve the size that you want. This step is very important to get the final size right. Take your time adjusting with even pressure on each side. Start to wrap these wires up and back through the loop. Keep checking your size as you switch sides. Feed the other wire through the other loop.
and then wrap the wire through the loop again to secure it. Carefully trim the wires on the inside of the ring band. I didn't like how that one was sticking out, so I trimmed it shorter. When trimming these wires, make sure they aren't sticking out. Tuck in the ends using the chain nose pliers. Check the size again, right on target. Make any small adjustments if necessary. Bend the 20 gauge wire up and into a rounded curve. This will be a focal wire. I like to bend it to meet that wrapped loop section to see how it's going to look like. I'll do the same on the other side. Once I'm satisfied with how that looks, I'll trim the wire at that intersection. Now I'll unbend that and get a measurement of that length. I'll cut the other side to that same measurement. Now I should have two wires sticking up, four wires sticking out the sides, and the 30 gauge wire tail still attached. Ready your clutter-free, fireproof area and use your torch to ball up the wire tips. This step is for professionals only. Do not attempt this if you've never used a torch on jewelry making before. You can do this step with a hammer to widen or flare the ends if you'd like. Place the piece into a pickle solution and rinse with water. You can use a file or fine sandpaper to remove the dark staining on the wires. Now we will add the focal beads to the ring using a section of 26 gauge wire. Bead the 26 gauge wire through that same loop we made a few steps ago. 
make sure to leave a two inch wire tail on each side. That same wire is going to come up through the middle. Wrap this wire twice around the loop. Now we will add the beads. Starting with the smaller silver beads, the silver rondelle spacer, and then the aurora beads, finishing up with the spacer and silver beads. Based on our measurements earlier, this focal beaded section should fit perfectly into the space we provided for it. To finish this focal section, we'll need to feed that same wire tail down into the loop and wrap it two times like we did on the other side. Check the size after installing the focal beads. At this point, check to see if the wrapped sections are long enough to span the other side. If not, add a few more wraps like I'm doing. That's why we left room for more weaving. Once I'm happy with the length, I'll add a few coils and trim and tuck the ends. Check the other side for the right length, and then add some coils before trimming and tucking the wire. I'm going to trim down these wires because for this step, too much wire can get in the way, so I'll leave about an inch of wire to work with. Carefully bend both wires together and feed them between the focal and the two wires that make up the frame of the ring. Before ending that side, start doing the same moves on the opposite side.
Continue to wrap these wires around the ring frame wires using the mandrel to hold the size true as you finish wrapping these wires around the front. I'm going to trim the wires on the front and tuck in the ends down, pointing towards the middle on both sides. Try to line up the spiral towards the end of the beads in the focal section. If the beads are a little loose feeling, you can put a wrap or two behind the beads to tighten it up. I'm going to do this on both sides. Now we are going to use the 26 gauge wire that we used to secure the beads to also secure this balled up wire to the ring frame. Coil the 26 gauge around the spiral a few times to anchor it to the ring band. trim and tuck in the ends. Do this for both sides. This ring was custom ordered at my Etsy shop. So if you like this ring and you want me to make one for you, check out my shop in the description below. 
one final check on the size and carefully do any minor adjustments. Make sure every wire end is neatly tucked away and check for any wires out of place. If you liked this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel for more tutorials like this one. And as always, thanks for watching! What do you think of this?